Hey guys and welcome back to the RuneScape video and in this video I'm going to show you guys an updated version of my Abyss range guide. So I posted a 1 to 99 range guide yesterday and the link I have for the Abyss is really outdated and so many methods have changed since then and I want to show you guys a new updated version so I can update that link and so you guys can be well informed that that method is still up and running. So the first thing you do of course is you gear up and I will talk about gear in just a second but you travel north into the wilderness from the Grand Exchange and you teleport with the Mage of Zemrak. Now to be able to teleport into the Abyss with the Mage of Zemrak you must have completed the Mage of Zemrak mini quest. Now that mini quest itself takes literally a minute or two so it's worth doing especially for this method. So in case you travel into a world and you enter into the Abyss and it's full all you have to do is head to the south of the abyss and as you can see here on the south west there's a little safe spot where if you notice that the world is full you can actually quick hop so you don't actually have to leave and then come back and check the world again so this might be very handy for some of you guys that actually use this method quite often so once you find an empty world you just get yourself ready for combat and that kind of stuff and then you travel to the south wall and you're standing in the same position that i'm in now, I strongly recommend that if a world is full, you quick hop. There's no point fighting for worlds because so many supplies will be wasted by both parties and just so many potions will be wasted and your experience will be reduced you know, dramatically. So there's no point fighting for worlds, just quick hop. And honestly, the faster you quick hop, the faster you get more experience elsewhere. So standing in the same position and making sure that no tentacles that are coming up from the ground are stopping any monster from attacking you. Because if a monster is standing behind a tentacle and can't reach you, that's one monster that you just aren't getting experience from. So make sure that you position yourself where no tentacles can block any monsters or anything like that. So let's move on into the sort of gear that you have to wear. Obviously, if you're going to be doing range, you must wear red chins or red chin jumpers. That's like a must because that is what allows you to hit so many monsters at the same time. And that is definitely a must. They can be bored on the Grand Exchange. So that's one of the easiest things to do. On your offhand, I am wearing an offhand chaotic crossbow with ascension bolts. One of the reasons why you should wear an offhand, you know, besides wearing nothing, is just because there's an extra combat style that you can kill these monsters with. So that's definitely a great thing to be using. And as my gear, I'm wearing elite void, not superior elite because I just don't have it. So my experience rates aren't going to be as high maybe as if I was wearing superior elite. But I am wearing Elite Void just because it increases your hits because I am not worrying about my armor or monsters hitting me because I am wearing a Vampirism Aura that also works in range. So that's something you should be wearing also. And as a cape, because you're wearing Red Chin Chompers, you aren't getting anything back. So wear the best cape possible, you know, that gives you the best range criteria. And I'm also wearing War Priest, gloves and boots. So those are a few things you can work around yourself. You don't have to wear the exact same armor if you don't want to, but definitely that might help you decide what sort of armor you should be wearing. As for your inventory though, make sure to bring the best potions to increase your range as possible, like overloads or something like that, and also bring prayer renewals, prayer potions, and some food, and a charming imp. Those things will allow you to stay here for quite a long time, and also bring a vampirism aura if you have it, because that will allow you to stay here for one hour and not worry about your food. Now in case while standing here and these monsters go non-aggressive, the best thing to do is just run away and run back. That will make them aggressive again. Moving on now into the experience raids, I was here for one hour and I managed to get 680,000 experience. That's obviously combined between range and constitution, so that was really good. And I would expect you to get around 500 to even up to 700,000 experience because I wasn't even wearing the best armors possible and I definitely wasn't experienced in this method but definitely getting this much experience is purely amazing. As for your ability bar though, make sure to add all your basic abilities, you know, you can see them all on the screen now and as my 50% threshold ability, I've got bombardment and directly my threshold reaches 100% also, I use, I think it's my called the deadly swiftness where you get a, it looks like a tornado around you for about 30 seconds or so, that will allow you to gain faster kills and it definitely increased my experience a lot compared to not using them every time it's available to me. So definitely using those abilities is purely amazing. But if you wanna go away from keyboard pretty much, just use your basic abilities, come back every five minutes, do a couple clicks so you don't log out and you're sorted. 
So thanks for watching this method. If you have any questions, please post below. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and also subscribe if you haven't done so already down below. And I'll see you guys tomorrow with another video. Peace out.